position in your boat. First and last. Jericho, and 
uh, sitting by the wayside, out of the way, and he was begging. Blind. Could not see. Uh, so he had, uh, you know, reason to beg. He had reason to uh, ask for help. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're pretty evident, right? Uh, that uh, uh, he was in need which was all of us, amen? We were all in need, just as this man. We were blind, could not see. We sat in darkness. We sat by the wayside. Uh, think about the seed that fell by the wayside, right? It says that Satan would come and, and take the seed immediately. That fell by the wayside. The Bible says that if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. That the God of this world hath blinded their eyes they cannot see the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lest it should shine unto them, the Bible says. And so we were all like that. And those in the world today who are lost, they are like this. They are that blind man sitting by the wayside uh, begging. Uh, they might not know that they're beggars, but they're beggars. They're looking for joy. They're looking for something to complete their life in this world. All the money that people could give to this man would not give him his sight. Would not give him the one thing that would help him to be able to come off of that beg, uh, you know, that wayside and from begging and be able to uh, live a life providing for himself. None of the things that anyone could do for him he could do for himself not to say that blind people can't do anything. We understand, you know, from the uh, day we live in that, that uh, you know, uh, people can do amazing things uh, and, and, and have done amazing things and uh, who have been blind, who have been deaf, who have, you know, been disabled in some other way. So I'm not trying to, you know, downgrade blind uh, people who are blind. But what I'm saying is that he did uh, not have the ability that people who can see had to be able to do things that we do and take for granted. You know, we, we take our eyesight for granted. Uh, many people who are blind did not start out blind. Maybe they were born with eyesight and they lived for a while and could see. And then some kind of degenerative uh, ailment uh, of some sort or... Or some people, you know, I've heard of diabetics losing their eyesight because of the diabetes. There's many things that can happen. And one of the things that, uh, you know, haunts them is that they used to be able to see. Right? The person who's never seen, they don't know what they're missing. But we take it for granted. Our eyesight. I hope we don't take for granted our salvation that has given us spiritual eyesight to be able to see. Because we do know what uh, once it was like to be blind, to be lost. But we also know what it was like when Jesus passed by. Amen. Yeah. And it says that He heard the multitude rushing by and he asked what, what is going on? What does this mean? What's happening? And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by and immediately he cried. <laughs> he knew his condition. <laughs> you say, how could he not know his condition, right? Well, there are so many people in this life who are blind and they don't know they're blind. They're going around and they're trying to feel their way through life and and most of the time they're stumbling and falling down, but they don't come to the realization that, hey, I'm blind, I need someone to give me sight. I need someone to help me. But this man, he knew his condition and he cried. And not only did he know his condition, but he knew the one person who could help him. Amen. And that was Jesus. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. This is what he cried. Have mercy on me. You see, when a person realizes their lost condition, 
then they understand that they need mercy. Amen? Not that something is owed to them. We live in a, a society and a world today where people think that everything is owed to them. That they deserve every good thing. We don't deserve every good thing. In fact, we deserve every bad thing. Because we were sinners. We were lost. We were at enmity with God. The Bible says if a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Yeah. We were the enemies of God. And we were lost. We were blind. And we were destitute. And when we come to that realization of our lost condition, we understand, I need mercy. This man was not angry that he could not see. He was not angry at God. He did not blame God, but he understood that God could heal him. And he asked God, he asked Jesus, Thou Son of David, have mercy on me. Oh, that people would understand their need for mercy. See, that's the one thing that's missing in their life. It's forgiveness. And they try to get confirmation, right, from people. And they tell their troubles to people. And, and when they tell them their troubles and the things that they've done in their life that you know they know is wrong, yet they, they try to get sympathy for it, right? They say, oh, but you know, it's because... I was dealt a bad hand, or it's because, you know, uh, my my mom, you know, left us, or my dad didn't treat us right, or all the things that they've done in their life, they have something to hinge it on, so that they can get sympathy and someone can pat them on the back and say, you know, you've done the best you can with the, the cards you've been dealt. You've done the best you, you know, anyone in your position would have done the same. When someone treats someone else badly, oh, it's their fault that I treated them that way. If they wouldn't have done this and that, then I wouldn't have done that and this. But the only thing that really is missing is forgiveness. And only God can forgive. Amen? Yeah. Even the Pharisees knew that. When Jesus forgave, gave that man his sins, he says, thy sins are forgiven thee. He healed him. Man, the Pharisees got mad. He said, who is this man that he's forgiving sins? There's only one who can forgive sins. They just didn't believe that he was the man. <laughs> but this man believed. Amen? He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. <laughs> I bet you he had never asked anyone that before. Some man walking down the road, hey, can I have some change? You know, somebody put some change in his cup or whatever he had to beg with. He probably never asked, but have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Because there's only one who can have mercy on us Amen. truly and forgive our sins, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm chapter 33. Verses 13 through 22 says, The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike, he considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered. By much strength. An horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Upon, him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Yeah. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in Him because we have trusted in His holy name. Let Thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in Thee. Amen. You see, many trust 
in vain things. They trust in a multitude of a host. In many, the Bible says, though they join hand in hand, they will not go and punish them. The world can come together and say, we don't need God, we don't need Jesus. We can become better ourselves. We can further our evolution. And uh, we can get to the point where we have no wars and no famine and no hunger. And we can do it through science. And we, can, we can do it through philosophy. We can do it through all these different things that man can try to do it through. And yet none of them can save them. They cannot save themselves multitude of a host, a strength of a man, a mighty man may trust in his strength. There's always someone mightier than he, right? <laughs> That's the one thing we learned growing up, you know. You might be pretty tough, but one of these days you're going to run into somebody tougher than you, right? <laughs> I mean, that's the way it's going to happen. There's always someone tougher. Those that trust in a horse, he says. And it's not just any horse. He says a horse is a vain thing for safety. Seems like in the battle, those that were upon their horse, their battle horses felt like they were untouchable because of the strength of the horse. They could just ride, plow down through the multitudes of people and just plow them over. But yet, a man on a boat who's got a good arm and a good eye can take down a man on a horse. Of course, now, in our, you know, you think about the Civil War, captains and all those rode on in on their horses. You take one musket, and that's it. All the things that men can trust in for their safety, all the things that men trust in for their deliverance, none of them can save them. It is until they realize that there is only one that can save them that they will cry out for mercy. And he says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear Him, upon them that hope in His mercy. And See, that's the thing about coming clean, right? Repentance is, is like coming clean. It's like admission that I'm guilty. I deserve it. I deserve death. I deserve it. Lord, have mercy on me. I think about the publican, right? Who, after the Pharisee made his speech and his prayer, the publican had said, would not so look up to heaven, but smote himself on the breast and said, Be merciful to me, a sinner. Well, Psalm chapter 62. The world goes on today and it seems like that they don't believe they need mercy. I don't need mercy. I've got things handled. I can do it on my own. Psalm 62 and verse 9, it says, Surely men of low degree are vanity. Men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance. Both men of low degree and high degree are going to be laid in the balance. And guess what they're going to be found? Wanting. They are all together lighter than vanity. None, none of them can measure up. And we understand this. The Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He says, trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Amen. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. You see, it's a, it's an all inspiring and humbling experience when you realize not only does God have the authority and right to 
judge us, but that he also has mercy to forgive us and to give us life. Not only the one with strength, power, but mercy and forgiveness. Psalm chapter 130. It says, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. You see, this man's crying out for mercy. Because he understands that if the Lord should mark iniquities, there's no one who could stand. Amen. There's no one who could be acquitted. But because of His mercy, there is forgiveness. He said, but there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in His word do I hope. Amen. My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watched for the morning. I'm going to tell you what, this man sitting by the wayside begging, he was waiting for the Lord. Amen? And when he heard the Lord was passing by, he began to cry out, Oh, Jesus, Thou Son of David, <coughs> have mercy upon me. Amen. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. This man was hoping in Jesus because he knew with Jesus there was mercy. And with Him is plenteous redemption. Amen. And He shall redeem Israel from all His iniquities. It says that the crowd told Him, Hush up. Be quiet. Hold thy peace. Man, I'm going to tell you what. There's one thing you cannot do when you come to the realization of your lost condition and that you know that there is one who can save you, who can redeem you, you cannot hold your peace. Amen. The Bible says that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made. I'm going to tell you what, it, it's like pinned up inside you when that heart believes unto righteousness. When that heart understands its lost condition and believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, it cannot help but to cry out. There is no amount of duct tape you can cover the mouth with that the mouth is going to cry out for Jesus. Amen. They said, hold thy peace. And it said he began to cry out even louder. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. And it says, And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. Amen. You see, we couldn't get to Jesus ourselves. He had to make the way. We would never be able to find him in the crowd. He had to make the way. He commanded. And we were brought. It is not of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but it is the will of God. Amen. God commanded from the very beginning. Just as I said this morning, Brother Cook refuses in his uh, visitation. Here's the law, you're guilty. Here's my son, death paid. God made the way. We couldn't get there on our own. That's the thing that the world, the lost, if they're ever going to receive that eternal life, that gift through Jesus Christ, they're going to have to realize they can't get it on their own. They can't get there on their own. But that God commanded. He commanded the light to shine in darkness. Yeah. That light, Jesus Christ. John chapter 12. Go 
John chapter 12 and verse 32. says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Yeah. This he said, signifying what death he should die. This morning we read in John chapter 3 where he told Nicodemus, he says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And he says here again, And if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. You see, that's yeah. how He made the way right there. Is that He was lifted up on the cross for our sins. He died for us. He made the way. We wouldn't have found it on our own. Praise God that it pleases Him through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yeah. This blind man, he couldn't have read for himself, could he? <laughs> now come on, think about it. He didn't read Isaiah 53 by himself. They didn't have Braille back then for blind people to read. That, that, that's something in the last 150 years that's been brought for 200 years. Now someone would have had to read to him. Someone would have had to preach the gospel. I'm going to tell you what. People that are out in the world, they're lost, they're blind, they're not going to find it themselves, folks. God has made the way. And guess what? He says, be ye reconciled unto God. Yeah. Amen. I beseech you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. You see, the whole purpose of us being separated, Brother Damon, as you talked this morning, the whole point of being peculiar people is that we might show others the way. Yeah. That we might preach that gospel to them. They're not going to find it on their own. Someone had to read the Scripture to this man that he knew by the Scripture that Jesus was the Son of God, the Son of David, the Messiah. That Jesus was the one who could save him. To call out and believe and have hope in His mercy. Maybe it was His mother that would read the Bible to Him. Maybe it was His father. Maybe both. But someone had to have given this man hope through the Scriptures. Because that's the only way we can have hope. Yeah. Amen? It's through the Scriptures. Yeah. And as I said, it pleases God through the preaching. The foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. This man had to have heard. Someone had to have preached it to him. He could not have read it himself. And just that same way with you, and I, someone that God placed in our life to show us and to preach and to show us the Word of God. And maybe it wasn't just one person. Maybe it was many people. Paul said, some plant and some water, but God giveth the increase. Right. But God has made the way. Amen? Yep. And it is up to you and I to preach the Gospel that they might find the way. Jesus said, If I, if I be lifted up from the earth, shall draw all men unto Him. And I'm going to tell you what, it is our privilege to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. To draw men unto Him. To preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because in the preaching of the cross, He draws men unto Himself. Yeah. John chapter 6. Verse 35 and 37. It says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, 
And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Because <laughs> it's not with physical eyes. Amen. It's sin. It's believing. It's faith. Amen. It says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Amen. All that come unto me, I will in no wise cast out. See, He is that bread of life. He is that well springing up within us that we will never hunger and never thirst. But what are we doing with that? What are we doing with that gift? We've been given such a good gift. Are we wasting it? God has given us such a precious gift of salvation. Yeah. Are we wasting it? Are we uh, ignoring it? Are we uh, uh, taking it for granted? I hope not. Because in John 14, 6, He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No man cometh unto the Father. But, but how shall they hear? Except there be a preacher. Amen. Yep. What Romans chapter 10 says. Yep. How shall they hear? Except there be a preacher. How shall they preach except they've been sent? Right. Well, we've been sent. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, Go ye therefore yeah. into all the world and preach the gospel. The problem is, have you heard? <laughs> if you've heard and you believe, you're not going to be able to help but speak of the things which you've seen and heard. Yeah. Jesus even said Himself in John chapter 3, He said, we have heard and we have seen and do testify. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> that we testify of that which we have seen. We testify of that which we have heard. You and I, amen, are to be that same Bible the preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus is the Word. Amen? Yeah. And the Bible says that for whom God did foreknow, He did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. Yeah. Man, we need to be Bibles, living Bibles. You and I have the Word dwelling in our hearts that we might go forth and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because He's the way, the truth. In the line. And then thirdly, it says, And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. You see, his receiving of his sight was just a product that happened in his heart. He didn't say, Your, your faith hath given you your sight. He said, Your faith has saved thee. <laughs> And now I'm giving you your sight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. You see, once we believe in Jesus Christ, He gives us everything we need. <laughs> he makes us whole. And the only way we can be whole is in Jesus Christ. And if we believed in Him, let's continue in our faith. In him. Because only in Him are we made whole. Only in Jesus Christ are we complete. And ye are complete in Him, the Bible says. In Him are you made whole. In Jesus do you have all you need. It says, and He is my helper. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. Why? Because it's Jesus who has provided everything for us. And our faith in Him gives us access into that grace yeah. in which we stand. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, as the he mentioned. Yeah. Why? For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, 
that <laughs> which we were foreordained that we should walk in them. It is by that grace that we have been given. It is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that has given us interest in entrance into that grace that has provided everything that we need. And the Bible says that God has given us to us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Yeah. You say, how can Jesus provide that? Well, Isaiah 53 tells us. We know it. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5 says, Surely He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. They said, hold your peace. He said, I can't. I don't have it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> How can you hold your peace when you don't have peace? Man, but He is our peace. Yeah. Because He bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His stripes we are healed. Yeah. Amen. He gives us everything that we need because He took upon Himself our sorrows and our griefs and our sins and our iniquities. Luke chapter 4 and Luke 3. <coughs> Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. It says, And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And He closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. The eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Amen. <laughs> and all bare him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? <laughs> oh man, what hinders us to believe? We believe. Amen. Just as that one man said, I believe. Don't thou mind I believe. And Jesus has everything that we need. Brother Josiah preached it while I was gone in my stead. He preached the simplicity of the gospel. Right? How true it is. It's pretty simple. Yep. For everything that we need, what did he say? Seek ye first. God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. Why? Because all we need is Jesus. And that's all we need. Yeah. Sight to the blind. If we have things that we can't see, we, we might have sight in one area and blind in another. But yet, Christ can give us sight. Amen. He gives sight to the blind. And all it is is that we believe world they sit in darkness but yet Jesus came to give them sight to give them light and he's 
left us here to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. To preach Jesus and the gospel of His salvation that He has come to heal the broken heart. He has come to deliver the captives and He has come to recover sight to the blind. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. We just thank you for all that you have provided us with. Lord, not because we have done anything for you, but yet, Lord, because we believe your word. Lord, because we have placed our hope in your mercy. And we trust in your strength. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to grow us, continue to mold us, to make us. Lord, continue to fill our mouths with your praise, with your word, that we might preach your gospel to a lost and dying world. Lord, we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Lord, for all that you have done. We ask that you forgive us where we fail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our altar is open for those who want to pray as we sing. At 146, there's only four verses of shelter in the time of storm.